especially when you are running a blog, having social share icons is very important for your site. Hi, this is JP here, and we're looking at another blog add-on for Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg within the WordPress editor. And we were a little bit conflicted over this blog. We thought it did exactly what it should, but there were a few things that threw us off. So where we initially gave it a four Ferocious Cats rating, after consideration, we slashed it down to three Ferocious Cats rating. It's still useful. It's still practical. Take under consideration the few things we will point out for you in this tutorial. I have a blog here, and it's a great idea to add the social share icons down here. Let's go into the WordPress editor, click on Edit Post, and then we scroll down here uh, to the bottom, click on Add a Block, and then we look for Ultimate Add-ons Blocks. And remember, to get this within your WordPress editor, simply go into Plugins, Add New, and search for Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg by Brainstorm Force. You can also check the link in the description below for more information on that. Click on this to open, and you look now for social share. With all these elements, it's not that easy to always find it. So you go to the search block, and you type in social, and you get social share over here. What you're going to do here will only apply to alignment of what you've got. So if you want it on the right, or you want it full width with many, let's put it back in the center. Everything else you're going to do on the right in the options sidebar. And the first one you have is how many social icons do you want to display? So if you have more than one platform, you will choose here more than one. So let's put it at four so that we can exactly see how it will work. Naturally, you don't want four social share Facebook icons unless you've got four different pages for some strange reason. Let's go to the first one and see how this works. So you select the type over here, which is currently set to Facebook, and then you have to set an icon or an image, which is nice. But on the other hand, I'll tell you the little gripe I have here. I love working with images because that means I can go and get my own PNG images, bring them in here and work with them. And I really like that control. There are many websites with specialized icons in terms of SVG and PNG, and it just gives your website a unique flavor when you have an icon that looks a little bit different than other sites. But in most cases, go for the icon. What I would have liked to have seen that when I choose Facebook, I could easily just choose the Facebook icon. But I have to actually physically go and set the Facebook icon. So if I click here and it's gone, you'll have to go and search for it as Facebook. This is just an extra step, and there are a few Facebook icons over here. But I thought it would have been a nice thing that when I select Facebook up here, it would have given me the Facebook icon by default. You have icon color. So if we want to make changes over here, we can put it in blue, and we can even give it a background. And we'll play around with that one very soon. You have the ability for hover, like so. Let's collapse this. And what I want to do is go back to one at this moment to show you one of the reasons we are taking down a point here. If I go to general over here, I have more control over this icon. So for example, I can increase the background size, and this slider is so sensitive, and then make it circular. This is very popular on many sites. So you have set up this styling. If I go back now here and I decide at the top that I want to have two or three, this is what's going to happen. You see, the reason why we are talking about that point that we deduct here is that what I style here, I will have to remember all those settings and go and style it for each of these. It would have been nice if it could have applied to all of them at the same time, no reason it's a little confusing why it works like this, because it means I'll have to remember the settings for each and every one and go and style them differently. The other problem is you can also not drag them around. If for some reason I decided that I want this Facebook element actually later, nope. So remember to put them in the order you want from the beginning. And for styling, you will have to go and change the styling individually for each and every one of these. It's a little bit extra work, but I'll add that little disclaimer there. But hey, it's free. Now let's change social share number two. And we put this one on Twitter. So here you understand now you'll have to go delete the icon, click there, and type in again Twitter, and then bring in the little bird, and so forth. 
Let's do this one and we put it on LinkedIn. And we drop in LinkedIn. And then we do it also for social share number four. And which one shall we choose here? Pinterest. Delete the icon. Go in for a pin to rest. There we go. And then you have to style them. Let's have a look at how this will display on the front end. I'm not going to worry about the styling of that first one. Just give you an idea of how this will display. There we go. They look pretty nice. Let's have a look at the general settings that we had worked on. You have the option here to put them vertical. If you want to put them in a side area or in a column, that will work very nicely. You can also decide when they're horizontal, when they should go vertical, aka stack from desktop, tablet or mobile. Desktop is a little bit strange because then you just put it on vertical there at the top. But if you decide that you want them stacked on mobile, from mobile they will become stacked. Stacked. Let's leave them on none for this because this is very important for our responsive display when we look at it on tablet and on mobile. Size over here will change the size. Ooh la la, that's pretty big. And again, be sensitive with those sliders, Jenny. They seem to get out of control. And then you have here the circular size. The one I want to feature on is the gap between. If you want to add more spacing between them, and I think I'll just reduce the circular size and then also here for the background, take that away. Let me just go back to that and take away the colors here for the background, uh, clear. And then let's say this one also clear, bring it back. It's not default. There we go, that's default. Now let's go back to general and we are here gap between. So you may want to add spacing like this. And here is where it loses one more ferocious cat for responsiveness. If I click on update and we go to the front end and I'll show you how we're going to activate those responsive views in Google Chrome. Let's have a look first. There we go. We want to see how this will display on a tablet or on a mobile device. On your keyboard, press F12 and in your browser, this will open your inspect area. To access the responsive views, you go up here where you see a little thing that looks like a cell phone and a tablet. Toggle that on and then you choose up here the preset. So if we go to iPad Pro, you will see there is iPad Pro. And if we go to iPhone X, you will see here is iPhone X. Did you observe what I'm going to complain about very soon? I'll show you that and I'll select responsive here because with responsive, I can drag this and we can see in real time how this changes. And that there, when I go into tablet, is the reason why this block loses one ferocious cat rating. And it's the same when I keep dragging into cell phone. The spacing that has been applied here for some reason when it goes into tablet and then into mobile, the spacing is removed. So to fix this, brainstorm force, guys, you will need to come back and give us some control here for mobile responsiveness. Over here, there, there it is for size and background size, but why we don't have that for the gap or icon between. If you don't like what it's doing here, the option you have is to go here to stack on and choose tablet, update. And what should happen now is that when you go to the front, and let's update this page. Once it goes into tablet, let's say it's stack on tablet, horizontal, update. Let's just click preview again to make sure it loads nicely. And that's what you're going to get then. Mm, nope. And somehow it keeps very nice spacing when it is stacked. So yeah, be aware of this. If you don't like what it's doing there, then maybe even remove the space here or make your icons a tad smaller, then it won't be so prominent. Still a very nice element. It's free. It's from Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg, and it will help you to bring that extra little touch to your blog pages, especially allowing people to share it on social media. See you in the next video. This is JP here, signing off.